everyone. Hello, Sister Maria Pierre. So nice to see all of you. Welcome. I would like to welcome our special guest this afternoon. He is the pastor at St. John Parish in Kitchener. So I don't know if you've been there before. So today, Father will be talking to us about two great known devotions, idol ones. Um, the Sacred Heart of Jesus or the Holy Eucharist or both. You don't know. It's a surprise. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Father Francisco Cruz. Thank you, Sister Marie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the nice words, Sister Mary Pio. You know, this is one of my, my hats. I am the pastor at St. John's in Kitchener, one of the oldest churches in town. And also, I am the pastor of Our Lady Guadalupe Parish. So it's the, the ethnic parish for Hispanic people in the area. So in some way, I'm like the bishop. You know, my parish is the whole diocese, so I'm very proud about that title. That means that I have a lot of people around, but that's okay. Um, and this is why my, this is the, the reason of my accent. I am Mexican. So in case you don't understand something, no worries. It's not, it's not your problem. It's my problem. So that explains a lot of things. And another of my beautiful titles that I have in life is I am the confessor of the sisters here at the, at the convent. So if someday you see me around, that's the reason why I come here to confess them. So I still remember a few years ago when Bishop Crosby called me uh, to ask me to do this ministry, the ministry of being the confessors of the sisters. So to be honest with you, every time the bishop calls you as a priest, you get very nervous because you say, what I did wrong? You know, maybe there is a complaint about me that I did something wrong. So he told me, Father, I want to ask you a special favor. You know, the sisters of Our Lady Immaculate, they need a confessor. So um, I was thinking about you. So I felt, you know, very proud. And then, Bishop, I don't think that I am the right person to do the job, but in case you want me to do it, I am okay. Later on, I realized that the reason he asked me to be the confessor here, it, it wasn't because of my gifts and my talent, but it's because everyone else says, no, thank you, Bishop, I don't want to. So at the end, I was the only one saying, yes, I think so. So this is what I heard, that's the, the, you know, the gossiping around this, the reason why. So, but I still am happy. I'm happy to be here today and to share, you know, um, a little bit of um, ideas and lights regarding a very important aspect of our faith, that is uh, the Eucharist. In some way, uh, when someone asks you, Father, could you please talk to us about the Eucharist, it's like, Father, could you please speak to us about life? You know, it's so big and so complex that it's impossible to say just something about the Eucharist. You know, the Eucharist uh, is the center of our faith, is the summit of our faith. Is at the end of at the end of everything, uh, our faith is God Himself. The Eucharist is God Himself. So this is why I think it's, it's nice to be able to have the opportunity this afternoon. To gather together at the, the chapel at his home to speak about him. So perhaps you will not hear anything new, but it's always good, it's always good to hear again the, the, the old things because they are nice. They are nice and they are refreshing. So mainly what I want to share with you today is just uh, a few ideas regarding the real presence of our Lord here with us in the Eucharist. I think, you know, God, when he was thinking about how can I stay close to my children in a way that is not so overwhelming for them, how can I be every day close to them so that they want still to live on this earth, that they don't want to die, to go with me? What is the best way to do it? And I think he, he, he said, okay, I found the right way. I will stay with them as a food, a food for the soul, a food for the body. And, and perhaps, you know, at, at that time when he was incarnated, the common food was bread. So he became the bread of life. 
I don't think that, you know, if God asks us ever our opinion about how he can be present, I think he, we never choose that aspect. I, I think we human beings, we prefer something more spectacular. Lord, how about to stay, you know, in the, in the, in the storm, in the wind, in the sun? And no, he said, I will stay with you as a bread of life, as a blood of uh, the Son of God in the wine. So it's kind of an, a different way, uh, a special way that God chooses to stay with us. Uh, when we speak about the Eucharist, mainly I think we speak about two things. You know, one is the moment in which Jesus comes down from heaven and stays with us. We call that moment the Mass or the Eucharist. This is one of the aspects that I want to, 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 to share with you today. So in some way, when we approach the Eucharist, is to approach like a diamond. You know, a diamond has a lot of faces. It's impossible for, you, for us to say, okay, let me just see one face of the diamond and I will see everything. We need to go around the beauty of all the faces of the diamond so that we can grasp a little bit uh, the, the deep meaning of the Eucharist. So I want just to share with you two of those faces of the diamond uh, of what is the Eucharist. The first one is the Mass. I know that, you know, we all have the chance to go to Mass very often. I go twice a day, so because I have to celebrate the Mass twice a day. So um, sometimes, you know, children ask me, Father, are you never bored celebrating the Mass? Because it's always the same. And sometimes I have to be honest with them and say, yes. Actually, I am sometimes, sometimes, you know, I just, I am there because I am the priest. Otherwise, you know, I, I don't want to hear my, my, my own homilies. But the reality is God invites us to be with him at his last supper. So every time we go to mass, we are at his place sharing food with him. And this is why the mass is always beautiful, because God invites us to be with him at, at supper. We know that supper, especially, uh, you know, when we think about family gatherings, are very important for creating mm -hmm. unity. Perhaps one of the most important events in our lives are family gatherings in which we have lunch together or dinner together, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, tomorrow, Canada Day, when we get together for having, you know, nice um, burgers and steaks. Uh, being together for having lunch is part of life. And this is why Jesus wants to invite us to his soul. Every time we go to Mass, we gather around the table of the Lord and he feeds us. So the first aspect important about this month of June in which we dedicate to uh, say thank you for the Eucharist is about the importance of gathering together for Mass. Mass is just not a few old prayers that we say together, guided by the priest, but the Mass is just making present again the last supper of Jesus. In some way, together with Jesus and the apostles, each one of us is invited to go there and be with him. And there is no other thing in, in, in the life that is more important than to be together with Jesus. So first thing that is important about the Eucharist is the fact that we are having supper with Jesus. We listen to his words at the Mass. You know, we, we read the, the scripture. Uh, we heard the explanation of those readings through the priest. And of course, the most important part, we witness Jesus coming from heaven in the bread and the wine that is given to us. Uh, so first important thing is part of our devotion to the Eucharist is participating at Mass. I know that you do that here very often, so almost like more than me as a priest. But it's always beautiful, you know, to remember that being at Mass is not just a possibility to pray with my brothers and sisters, but is participating at Jesus' dinner, Jesus' family gathering. And he invites each one of us. It's not just, you know, because by case I am around. Jesus is thinking about inviting you. So that's one of the beautiful things about, being the, uh, about coming to the Eucharist. And uh, receiving communion 
at the Eucharist uh, is one of the ways in which Jesus wants to make us visible that he is living with us. In some way, you know, to, uh, to make that more visible, just let's pretend for a, a moment that this chapel is transformed in uh, pieces of gold. So, and, you know, the, the owner of the chapel comes to you and says, okay, all this gold is for you, only if you can, if you can grab it uh, and bring it with you only one time. You have one chance to grab all the, all the, the gold that you can, but just once. And, 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 of course, we will be kind of disappointed because we are not able to carry the whole thing with us. We just have to grasp a little bit. Uh, but that will be enough for us every time we come to Mass. We don't receive a grace, a great gift of gold. We receive God himself. And instead of God telling us, okay, you just can't receive me once, that that will be enough for us to be united with God for the rest of our lives, only just to receive him the Eucharist one time will be more than enough to open for us the gates of paradise, but he wants to come for us, with us, pretty much every day. In some way, from this great richness of God, we're invited every, every day just to get a little bit every day. Uh, even if every visit, visit of Jesus is enough for the whole life, we can come every day. And we can be rich, not physically or financially, but spiritually. When Jesus is living in you, you are becoming a house of God. And, uh, you know, you don't even just enjoy God's presence, but in some way, become more like Jesus. He, following this example, you know, in case you cannot only grasp some gold that is here around, but actually just pretending that you, you yourself become gold. I know that is not that kind of attractive to become gold, but I'm pretty sure you will have a lot of friends in case you are gold. You know, everyone is coming to visit you or try to grasp something from you. This is what happened with the Eucharist. God is not only coming to us, but he transforms us in his house. I know that this, this, is, this is sometimes, sometimes it's too much for us because we, we know that we are not worthy of that. We know that we are sinners. We know that we have defects and limits. But this is why we call ourselves believers. We believe in that. We accept Jesus' word that is saying to us, I am coming and you, I want to transform you in me. And I don't know if you experience that. I do as, at least, you know, I, I speak in, for myself. Sometimes I struggle to, uh, in some way, to, to make that step of faith and say, Lord, you love me so much. that You don't care about my limits. You just want to love me and, and be with me. You just want to give yourself to me. Even if I have, you know, if I am a sinner, a great sinner, and I know that I say no to you very often. You don't care. You want to come with me. Uh, another aspect of, you know, what we are celebrating almost at the end of this month, the, uh, uh, this month dedicated to the Eucharist, is the reality that in the Eucharist, God transforms us in, in himself. A friend of mine, not very far, I mean, not very long time ago, uh, she uh, is a parishioner. She has a big house, you know, in in uh, in in the um, in the countryside. So unfortunately, she found four little squirrels that had lost their mom. So this lady has a great heart. So she said, "I will nurse in them so that they can survive." So she 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 opened her house to those those four little squirrels. And she was keeping feed them and taking care of them. And I, she asked me, you know, to visit uh, her family. So I went and the squirrels in some way, they, they get used to humans and they run all over you and you stay in your house, in your, in your head. And, and they, oh, 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 they even admit to be fed by you by hand. So they were kind of happy with human beings. So 
And, and you see how the squirrels, they just grab everything and put it in their mouths. So they, they have like everything, you know, all the nuts inside. And we know that eating nuts, they get healthy and alive. And they transform the nuts in themselves. You know, like the, the squirrels became nuts. When they eat nuts, they just keep squirrels. And with the Eucharist, it's actually the opposite. Every time we eat the body of, of the Son of God, we don't transform him in us. He transforms us in himself. That's one of the beauties of the Eucharist. Jesus uh, is not transforming us. He transforms us in himself. And this is, one, this is something that, you know, uh, only we can grasp by faith. Because we are still the same. You know, we, we bear the same names, we have the same personality, the same history, the same story in life. Seems that we are the same, even after receiving communion. But every time Jesus comes to you, he transforms you in himself. This is the only food that instead of being transformed in you, the food transforms you in him. So Jesus, every time that he comes in the Eucharist and comes to us, uh, he makes us like him. So this is the first aspect of what uh, I want to share with you, the beauty and the grace that we have, being able to participate at Mass. Maybe we grew up as a Catholic, so we are used to that. We know that we went to Mass since we were little. And sometimes we are so used to that, that we don't remember the, you know, the richness of what we have. Every time we come to Mass, we are close to Jesus as the apostles were. In some way, we, we are like St. John, St. John the Evangelist, that was able to just rest his head on Jesus' chest and hear he took his heart. He trusts us so much that he wants us to be close to him. Second beautiful aspect about this uh, gift that we have of the Eucharist is, of course, the fact that we have Jesus here all the time. So at the beginning, actually, our brothers and sisters in their church, they, they, they were not aware of that. They just went to the Eucharist, to the Mass, uh, the first centuries, and they just consumed the communion and they just depart. But there was a moment in which, you know, they, they didn't know how many people are going to be at Mass, so they consecrate more bread than enough. They have some leftover of the consecrated host, and they just keep it in a special place. And they realize, okay, Jesus is here. He's not only coming to live with us, to be our food, but also he wants to live with us. So we, right now we have the tabernacle, like a regular thing in, in church. But it's amazing just to be aware, Jesus is living in my house. Like, like you guys, you have Jesus living in you. He has his own room, of course, as you have your own room. He, he, this is his room. So he's a resident in you. And that's one of the beauties of our Lord. He's not happy only being in heaven, you know, by himself, with the, the angels and the saints. He wants to be with you. And every time we come here to the chapel, we found him. Not just an image of God or a spiritual presence or in some way something that makes us aware of his presence. But is he himself? So it's, it's kind of too much for our minds because to be able to know where God is is too much for our souls. But this is the reality. Jesus, in his great love, he decided to stay with us in a humble way. We know that behind the doors of the tabernacle, Jesus is there. And he's always listening to us. He's always hearing our prayers. He's happy every time he sees us coming in to spend some time with him. He's happy the fact because of the fact that you are here today, just spending some time with him. In some way, the Eucharist is like the sun. You know, when we are outside right now, no, because of the smoke. So there is today is not is not working. But usually, when there is a sunny day, and you want to to you know to ha to have more sun and you just you don't do anything you stay there and the sun is doing it's working you the same happens with the eucharist when you come here 
and just stay here, per perhaps quiet or praying or doing something, Jesus from the Eucharist is doing his work of sanctification in you. You don't have to do too much. Sometimes we are stressed out in our spiritual life, thinking, what else should I do? Not too much. One of the best things that we can do is just to spend time here with him. Because he, as the sun, you know, he's giving us energy, power, and strength so that we can grow up in our faith. And another beautiful aspect of communion is uh, the fact that Jesus is always open to help us. You know, when I was younger, a few decades ago, I found a beautiful uh, example of uh, a pia pianist that was uh, uh, converted from the Jewish faith to Catholicism. Uh, he's um, Herman Cohen. So he was a Jewish pianist, and in a certain moment of his life, he felt the call of becoming a Catholic. And he joined the Carmelites and, and became an apostle and a, a, a preacher of the Eucharist and uh, Eucharistic adoration. And he has a beautiful words that I want to share with you today because in some way uh, show us uh, what is the, the way that Jesus wants to be with us. So uh, Father Cohen say uh, this, Jesus Christ today is the Eucharist. And he said, today I am weak. I need a strength from above to brace me. And Jesus, Jesus Christ comes down, come down from heaven and becomes the Eucharist, the bread of the strong. Today I am poor. I need a roof to shelter my head. And Jesus becomes a house, the house of God and the gate of heaven, the most holy Eucharist. Today I am hungry and thirsty. I need food to fill my soul and heart. Drink to slake my burning thirst. And Jesus becomes the bread and wine of the Eucharist. Today, I am sick. I need a soothing balm to heal my soul's wounds. And Jesus pours himself out over my soul like a costly ointment, offering himself to me in the Eucharist. Today, I must offer a pleasing sacrifice to God. And Jesus himself becomes that sacrifice. Jesus is the Eucharist today. Today, I am persecuted. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. I have lost my way and he is my guide and star. I lack courage and he lifts me up. I am sorrowful and he consoles me. I, aban I am abandoned and, and he remains with me until the end of, this, of times. I stand in ignorance and he teaches me and enlightens me. But above all, I need love. No early love will soothe my heart. For this, for this, reason, for this reason, Jesus concealed himself in the Eucharist because Jesus loves me. His love is sufficient to me. He satisfies me and bathes me in an ocean of love. So speaking about the Eucharist, speaking about the real presence of our Lord here, of course, is, is too much for us. It's too much for our souls. It's too much for our minds. And this is why it seems to me that Jesus is quiet and silent in the Eucharist. He doesn't want to overwhelm us. He wants to stay just here with us and be the best of the friends, the best of uh, the listeners, the, the best of the companions, because he's always here with us. Of course, we need faith. And faith is not, you know, about understanding or feeling something. It's most about trust. We say, Lord, I don't understand your greatness. I don't understand why you did that, but I really trust in you. I have confidence in you. If, you. if you said to me, I am the bread of life, I am here with you, I believe so, because you said so. I don't have any other reason to believe, just the fact that you said to me that, 
and I trust in you. So hopefully, you know, the fact that you have here Jesus with you at your residence, that is a great privilege. You know, Jesus himself is living with you. Not even priests, we are, we are allowed to do that. We cannot, we cannot have the Eucharist at home, but you, you, you can do that. So, you know, to go and make a visit to the, to the Eucharist, we, got, we have to go to church. You just can't come and spend here a little bit time with him. And again, he's happy. He's happy just because you come, you spend some time with him uh, and share with him your sufferings, your problems, your family issues, everything, everything that you have for him and just leave it here at the altar. He's happy to receive it as an offering. We know that we are weak and he's powerful. He doesn't need, you know, our perfection. He's perfect enough. Uh, he, the only thing that he needs is our love, our confidence, our, our time with him. So uh, today as uh, we are closing this month, the month of June, a month that is dedicated to the devotion, to the Eucharist, to the real presence and to the celebration of the Mass, and also to that a uh, wonderful image of his love in Jesus' heart, the sacred heart of Jesus. We are thankful because we have the privilege to gather here at his home as children. You know, again, uh, every time we, are, we, we come to his place, in some way we are the children coming to visit our, our family, our parents. We gather at God's house, spend some time with him, and allow him to bless us. So thank you. Thank you to each one of you for the attention today. Thank you for uh, giving me the grace to share our own faith. You know, every time I have the chance to speak about our faith, I am the first one that I am blessed because of that. I am the first one being happy about renew, renewing our, our faith and be, being able to, to preach to myself about our, the beauties of our faith. Uh, but I think Jesus is, is happy. Jesus is happy just the fact that we all are here. So thank you again uh, for this uh, uh, gift. And may God bless you. And thank you for the, the opportunity to share our faith with you.